Hey, I'm Rob Rob, and today we're going to talk about routers. Not this kind of router, this kind of router. Okay, six months ago we had to upgrade our internet to gig speed internet. Our Gen 1 Eros just couldn't keep up. Even hardwired plugged into them, like I was getting half the speed we were paying for, so a router upgrade was in order. Um, Given the size of the house we had to cover and the amount of devices, I wanted to, you know, look at mesh systems and, uh, you know, Wi-Fi 6 was just coming out. So here we are, a pile of Wi-Fi 6 mesh systems. What is here? We've got the Asus, which was wire cutters top pick as well as their upgrade pick. We've got the highest end Orbi system they have from Netgear, and I've got the highest end Eero Pro 6. What's not here, there's also, you know, Wi-Fi 6 offerings from TP-Link and Linksys, but I didn't think they really added enough to throw them into the mix, you know, especially since I'm doing this with my own money. The other big thing that's not here is Unify. <laughs> I use Unify at my office, and I love it. If I had wiring at my house, I would want to use Unify, but you know, as far as mesh goes, they have a couple of things out there. They've got their weird alien thing, which was also in that like $700 up category. And I read enough to know about that had some weirdness I didn't want to compromise with. And then they've got the dream stations, which I've heard a lot of good things about, but it's not Wi-Fi 6 and I just, because of the unique needs of MySpace, I didn't think those would work for me. But yeah, I do love Unify. They're not in the mix. Here. All three of these are really great products, and I'm sure a lot of people are happy with all of them. I personally found that there were kind of trade-offs with each one, and that's really like the motivation to make this video, is so that anybody else that's out there that's kind of nerdy and wants to dive into this but isn't quite sure, you know, which one to invest in and doesn't really want to spend $2,000 buying and returning things, hopefully this is helpful. So, the Asus. Again, this was Wirecutter's upgrade pick, and... Uh, it's the one I used for six months and I really wanted to love. It's awesome, but... So first, it's super fast and it is by far the most configurable. However, <laughs> with all that power comes a bit of flakiness and, um, you know, for starters, there's constant firmware upgrades and those are kind of a crapshoot as to whether they're going to break things. Like, you know, one of them like broke Sonos compatibility with some people. And like on the Asus forums, you're always just reading like, hey, is this firmware good? Or which one did I have to roll back to after this one broke something? To me, um, initially everything was fine with the, the stock firmware it came with, except my Ecobee would not connect my smart thermostat it would kept disappearing from HomeKit. And it would just, sometimes it'd be there, sometimes it wouldn't. It drove me crazy. I ended up working around that by just plugging in my old Eero and letting the Ecobee connect to that. And I had a second HomeKit only network, basically just for the thermostat, because this product was that awesome and I wanted to work around it. However, you know, as the months went on and as the firmware update stacked up, more and more stuff, like our Google devices would sometimes drop and, you know, they would get flaky. Um, the final straw was our Eufy camera that we have in our crib. Um, we need that when we're out in the garden or if we're out at the pool or hot tub, like I need to be able to, I need that to work. While I was troubleshooting the Eufy, I saw people just flat out say they blamed the Asus and they switched to the Orbi and didn't have any more problems with the Eufy. So I did that and I found that, you know, that was in fact true. So all of, um, all the weird little issues we had with the network um, seemed to be an ASUS specific thing. When I switched to Orbi and Eero, like I had no HomeKit problems, no camera problems. Which again, it's a shame because this thing was like screaming fast and it was by far the least expensive of the options. 
and the web tool and mobile app were both pretty good. They looked like they were designed, you know, by Winamp Skin Designer in the 90s, but they were solid and, you know, like I said, the Asus by far had the most complicated and powerful web admin tool. If you're a nerd and these work for you, like there's a reason why Wirecutter and Tom's Hardware and everybody else loves these things. The Asus was great. It just literally didn't work with a couple things I had here and they were just really important things. So gotta sell these. Orby. And I'll be honest, my Orby experience was pretty short lived. Mostly because of the price. This thing was more than my Mac Mini. I think MSRP was $750 or $799. Like, whatever it was, it was ungodly expensive. And for that amount of money, I would expect a pretty compromise-free experience. While the hardware and performance, like, it worked and was stable. The software, on the other hand, was... Uh, <laughs> A pretty mixed bag. The mobile app first is just straight up garbage. It doesn't let you do very much to begin with, but the one thing that you supposedly can do in it, where you just kind of like label your devices and you sign them in, you know, a, a host name and an icon, like I would go through and do it and it would save them. And then the next time I'd reload the app, like they'd be reset to their defaults. So even like with very limited functionality, the mobile app didn't work. The web admin, you know, it, it had a little more power. Like you could do, you know, your IP reservations and name things and the name stuck when you did it on the website. Um, and it has a little bit more than the Euro, like you can do dynamic DNS and stuff. But overall, like, it, was, it didn't hold a fraction of the power that the Asus did. Finally, that brings us to the Eero, specifically the Eero Pro 6. <sighs> Honestly, I, pro like, I probably could have just like, I, like, I guess I blame the wire cutter. Like as soon as I plugged these in and saw that they were working, I was like, why did I go down this rabbit hole in the first place? Honestly, like first the Eero's just work. It just works has always kind of been the Eero philosophy. Um, like it's never been the most kind of like bleeding edge fastest. Like obviously like, you know, these are made for gig internet connections. So, you know, plugged in, I can max out my, you know, my LAN, like speed wise, they're fine. So unlike the Asus and the Orbi, which both kind of come with matched pairs, you get three stations with the Eero. And that works really well for my home. I'll, let me just go sketch it out and show you why. So we have a two story brick building with a full basement. The internet kind of comes into my office at the top. I've got a TV in the main floor, cameras all over the basement, you know, devices scattered throughout the house. Then, you know, I've got a backyard with a hot tub and speakers in a pool, and out at the far back, we've got a garden. Good coverage in the backyard is super important because we've got a regular radio baby monitor that won't really reach beyond the house. And my wife likes to do a lot of gardening, we like to go to the pool and hot tub, so we need Wi-Fi out there. Finally, I've got a file server under my TV that's got an old Wi-Fi card, so having that third station is nice to have a wired access point. One place I will ding the Eero hardware is the Ethernet connections. They only have one gig port jacks, um, whereas the Asus and the Orbi have 2.5 gig, you know, WAN connections. Um, like our gig internet's already been upgraded to 1.2 gig internet, and uh, you know these can't keep up with that. So for the premium price that these things, you know, are asking for and all the other tech that's packed inside, it would have been nice to see a faster WAN connection. But other than that, that's really kind of the only hardware complaint I'd have about the Eero. Software-wise, a lot of people will complain that, you know, you have to use their mobile app, but get over it. Like, you know, this it's the year 2021, 20, like we use mobile apps. There's no web admin at all for the Eero, 
which, you know, some people aren't going to like. Everything's done through the app. I think the app's really great, though. Like, of all of them, it's by far the slickest and easiest, fastest to use. I've got 50 to 60 devices on my network, and it's super easy to, like, name them all, give them, like, an icon that makes sense. You can see what's connected to what space station. If you need to assign static IPs or do port forwarding, like, you know, that kind of basic stuff's easy to do in the app. Um, the only thing it doesn't do that would be nice is dynamic DNS. And they have their own kind of semi-DDNS solution, but you got to pay 99 bucks a year, uh, which sucks. But other than that, like, I really like the Euro software. Like, the mobile apps, you know, a joy to use. And it just works. All right, so who are these things for? I mean, obviously, I like the Euro. And I think most people that just want something that just works. And then if you need to like occasionally just go like manage something, like you can do that easily with a mobile app. I think the Euro is going to be great for most people. I think if you're a tinkerer and if you want like total control and like the maximum options on your network, you should check out the Asus. It's super sweet and by far the most powerful and capable admin wise. Otherwise, you know, the Orbi, who is this thing for? I think it's probably for affluent people that don't care. <laughs> and by that, I mean, like, if you're, like, your dad or someone that, you know, like, you just need the Geek Squad to install their internet and tell them what their Wi-Fi name is and what their network password is. Basically, people that just want fast internet that works, but they are not going to be, like, doing anything, like, modifying... <laughs> The software at all like give them the orbi because they don't have, you know hardware is great but if you know i think it starts to fall apart once you start working with the apps at least from a user experience point of view i hope somebody else finds this helpful like i kind of enjoy this stuff but i'm also like very happy to be like done so if this can help somebody else make up their mind Awesome.